Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune condition. This means that your immune system mistakes part of your body for a foreign substance and attacks it. In the case of MS, it attacks the myelin sheath in the brain and the spinal cord. The myelin sheath is the layer that surrounds your nerves, protecting them and helping electrical signals travel from the brain to the rest of the body. The attacks cause the myelin sheath to become inflamed in small patches referred to as plaques or lesions, which can be seen on an MRI scan. These patches of inflammation can disrupt the messages traveling along the nerves. It can slow them down, it can jumble them up and send them the wrong way completely or stop them getting through altogether. This disruption leads to the symptoms and signs of MS. There are two different types of MS. One of them is referred to as remitting and relapsing MS. More than eight out of every 10 people with MS are diagnosed with this type. Someone with relapsing, remitting MS will have episodes of new or worsening symptoms known as relapses. The periods between these attacks are known as periods of remission. These can last for years at a time. After many years, usually decades, many but not all people with relapsing remitting MS go on to develop secondary progressive MS. Around half of people with relapsing remitting MS will develop secondary progressive MS within 15 to 20 years, and the risk of this happening increases the longer you have the condition. Just over 1 in 10 people with progressive MS start their MS with gradual worsening symptoms. In primary progressive MS, symptoms gradually worsen and accumulate over several years, and there are no periods of remission, although people often have periods where their condition appears to be stabilised. More than 100,000 people live with multiple sclerosis in the UK. It's most commonly diagnosed in people in their 20s and 30s, although it can develop at any age. It's about two to three times more common in women than men, and is one of the most common causes of disability in younger adults. MS is not directly inherited, but people who are related to someone with the condition are more likely to develop it. The chance of a sibling or child of someone with MS also developing it is estimated to be around 2-3%. to There is no identified cause of MS. Patterns of MS presentation can vary significantly between individuals. Common symptoms include fatigue, difficulty walking, vision problems such as blurred vision, involuntary eye movements, double vision or temporary loss of vision, problems of controlling the bladder, bowel issues such as constipation are very common, numbness or tingling in different parts of the body, muscle stiffness and spasms, problems with balance and coordination, problems with thinking, learning and planning, and the symptoms of stress, depression and anxiety that come with the reality of living with a chronic condition. Pain is one of the most debilitating symptoms of MS. This pain is, is divided up into two categories, neuropathic pain and musculoskeletal pain. Neuropathic pain is pain caused by the damage to the nervous system caused by the MS condition itself. These can be experienced in extremities such as stabbing pains in the face, feelings of burning, pins and needles, hugging, squeezing or pressure in the torso or limbs. Musculoskeletal pain is often back, neck and joint pain and can be indirectly caused by MS, particularly for people who have problems walking or moving around that put pressure on their lower back or hips. There is currently no cure for MS, but a number of treatments can help control the condition. Muscle spasms, for example, are managed with muscle relaxants such as diazepam, clonazepam and baclofen. Neuropathic pain symptoms are usually managed with medications such as gabapentin, carbamazepine or amitriptyline. Physiotherapy is often recommended alongside these to maintain strength in the limbs and dexterity for as long as possible. Immunosuppressants are also sometimes prescribed in an attempt to reduce the amount of relapses experienced by those living with remitting and relapsing MS. The first cannabis medicine to be licensed to be prescribed on the NHS was to manage muscle spasticity in MS. Cannabis medicines can be effective for pain management, as both THC and CBD have anti-inflammatory effects. THC has also been proven to be an effective neurological painkiller. Cannabis medicines are proven muscle relaxants, and this can improve flexibility and dexterity, and can be effective in the management of spasm. 
It can also enable patients to undertake physiotherapy exercises important for maintaining muscle tone and strength. Cannabis medicines can also be helpful for fatigue busting, improving energy levels and reducing brain fog. Cannabis medicines can help with mood elevation, mood stabilization and as an anti-anxiety, helping those living with MS to improve their quality of life.